Hey guys, Crewman here with another Nexa video. Now, with the price of Nexa continuing to climb, as you can see right here, I've had a lot of people continue to ask me, Crewman, what are your overclock settings? What GPUs are you mining with? What do you recommend mining with? So, I wanted to go over my GPU settings. Now, with the hash rate continuing to climb as it has, it is now 363 terahash. I feel that it's important to be targeting efficiency instead of just raw power. So let me share with you my overclock settings. Now I want to run a quick disclaimer. These are my personal settings. Your cards may differ from mine. Uh, just because they work for me does not mean they'll work for you. Remember, things that affect overclocks are the temperature your GPUs are kept in, um, you know whether they have a lot of airflow or not, and the kind of GPUs they have. Mine are kept outside in a shed, so my temperatures are basically whatever I want them to be at this time, especially with how cold it is in the winter. So I'm able to keep these things pretty cool and push them pretty hard in terms of performance to efficiency. So here's a quick chart. Uh, these are the GPUs I am currently using. So here are the GPUs I'm using, the hash rate they're currently getting on Nexa, the power they're consuming, and the efficiency. Now note that I did not have time to take each one of these out individually and get their exact wall meter readings. So this is what's on Hive. Uh, AMD GPUs sometimes are usually not correct. So I would add maybe plus or minus 10% to it. I'm just showing you the numbers I have so you can make an informed decision on your own. Something else to keep in mind, I do not own a 3080 or a 3090 Ti anymore. However, I have owned them in the past and for mining with them, they basically perform the same as a 3090 more or less. So I'm just giving you, and I, and I own a 3090, so I'm giving you estimates of what I think the 3090 Ti and the 3080 Ti get. So let's get to it. You can see the 4090 gets about 122 mega hash at 312 on the power for a 0.39 efficiency. Now that is the best efficiency you can get right now in terms of Nexa mining in my opinion. But you know, these things are expensive and their ROII time is never. However, I use mine for gaming primarily. So when I'm not gaming on them, I just mine on them because why not at this point? Um, 3090, 3090 Ti, 3080 are basically the same. They've got a 0.27 efficiency. Um, well, the 3090 Ti, I think, might have a little bit better efficiency. Uh, negligible, but, but better. Uh, I put them at about 250 watts for about 69 mega hash. Seems to be the sweet spot. Um, 3080s are pretty solid. I found that 200 on the power and gets you about 57 hash. And you're looking at about 0.28 on the efficiency. Um, the... 3070 Ti, it's okay. I thought it was a lot worse, but I was able to do some tweaking on it. Uh, you're getting about 47 mega hash at 178 on the power. The 3070 is, funny enough, not the most efficient, but it's up there. It's close. It's still really great. Um, I have a lot of them. Mine are ranging from anywhere from 43 to 42 to 41 mega hash. I'm sorry, 45 to 41. So I settled in the middle for 43 at about 147 so i run them between 140 and 150 watts so i'm just doing 147 on the watts because that was what i was getting the best performance on um, you might be able to run them at a little bit lower power for a little bit more efficiency some of mine are but that's just the number that seemed to work the best for me um, 3060 ti gets you about 35 mega hash at about 137 watts for 0.25 efficiency still pretty good uh, it starts to get worse the lower we go down on the nvidia gpus 3060s give you about 28 mega hash um, they're power guzzlers but i found that they were the best at around 120 watts so 0.23 efficiency uh, now for the turing gpus i only have three total so i don't i didn't really get in much of a spread all of the other gpus i've tested at least six of them minus the 3090 um, so I was able to get those, those are pretty good spreads, especially one, the 3070 and the 3060 Ti, I have quite a few of those. Um, so 2070 was meh, uh, 144 Watts for 24 mega hash. I haven't really messed with that one. Uh, I'm probably going to sell both uh, the last three of my Turing GPUs. Now I've kind of decided, uh, I'm just going to get rid of them and replace them with some 3060 Ti's. Um, 
So then you're looking at for the two 30, 2060 Supers, 24 mega hash at, you know, 140 watts, a little bit more efficient, but still kind of bad. Um, now let's go to the AMD side. Now the 6700, now these are the only GPUs I own currently on AMD, so I'm not able really to give you much else. And as far as overclocking goes, I don't really mess with the VDD, you know, the VMEM, all of that. I just kind of do simple core and memory on them because I have bad luck when it comes to trying to really, really tweak them. And I, it's more time than it's worth, to be honest with you. And remember, these readings are at the the um, meter, no, not at the meter. They're on the software, so I would probably plus or my, I'd probably add maybe 10%. Again, I'm just showing you what I see though. I'm not making any other assumptions. Uh, I have one 6800 XT left. I sold the rest of mine. It gets about 54 mega hash at 185 watts. So it's slightly more efficient than the 3080, which is pretty solid. The 6800 non XT gets about 45 mega hash, so about 220 watts. I think you can get that a little more efficient, but like I said, I haven't wanted to mess with it. And uh, it's okay at 0 0.20 efficiency, not burning down the world, but it's all right. Now, in my opinion, the real winner on the AMD side, as far as Nexa goes, is the 6700 XT at 28 mega hash at 100 watts. I have about um, 10 of these, and they all do great. Now, the only AIB one I have is a power color, and that one does a little bit less on the efficiency i think it's 0.18 still solid though uh and then we have 5700 xts i have six of them i'm kind of rethinking my opinion on them their efficiency isn't the best but i paid so little for them that i think it's okay i mean it's they're, they're two on it same efficiency as 6700 20 mega hash at 110 watts um but again, like I said, the price I paid for them was so little. Like I basically thought I basically sold one thirty eighty and one RX five eighty, and it covered the cost of the rig. So I think it was worth it. Um, and I think I'm gonna hold on to them. Actually, I've I've thought long and hard about it, and I was thinking about getting rid of them. But I think right now, uh, with the their current value, I think they're just worth holding on to and mining when you can. So let's go over my overclock settings. Uh, first, we're gonna go over Nvidia, and we're gonna go over them in Hive. I'm assuming most of you know how to use Hive. If you'd like me to make another video on that, I will. But I just like to keep these overclock videos short and sweet so people can get the information that they need, listen to my opinion, and then move on. Cool. Um, next is actually not too difficult to tune. So basically the biggest thing you want to know is for GDDR6X memory, the sweet spot is 170 on the core. For non-GDDR6X, it's 150. It's, a, it's some kind of memory error. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head because I don't. All my GPUs are running good. Um, you just keep lowering down the. You just lower down the core. So you know you go anywhere from say 150 to you know you lower it by 20. And if you keep getting the error, you keep going down. I haven't had to lower any of mine uh, under 100 core, and it doesn't really affect the hash rate at all. So. I wouldn't worry if you have to keep lowering it, but like I said, I haven't had to go below 100, and most of mine are at 150. I might be, maybe have some at 140, and none of my GDDR6X rigs have had to be adjusted past 170. Now, as far as power, you can see what I have here. For the 3070 and the 3060 Ti, I prefer 140 and 130 respectively. The 3060, I prefer at 120. Uh, as far as the Turing rigs go, I didn't really do much with those. I'd start somewhere between 150 and 140. For the amp for the 30 series GPUs, my power is pretty well tested, and I found that these are all the best settings. Um, for the 3070 Ti, I prefer 180 on the power level. At 3080, I prefer 200, and then the 80 Ti, 90, 90 Ti, 250 will work just fine. Uh, the 4090, I haven't really tweaked too much, but 300 seems like the sweet spot on where to go. And the efficiency is so good that I'm fine with it. If you're using Windows, let me show you what to do. Basically, you just pull up MSI Afterburner. And when I'd say power limit, you want to adjust the power accordingly. So I would start at 70. I would, so if you're on Windows, for any of your 30 series GPUs, I would start at 70. And then I would start adjusting it down or up depending on the hash. You know, you want to try to match my efficiency or beat it. 
Uh, so basically, you just take the power, or you take the hash rate divided by the power, and then you see where you, you know you see if you can beat mine or get close. Or as far as the fan, you just control the fan with the uh, fan speed slider, and then for the memory clock, you always want to start with the memory at negative five hundred two, and then the settings I gave you for the core, you can just use like you know one hundred fifty to one hundred seventy, depending if you have GDR six or six X memory. Now, as far as AMD goes, I do not mess with a lot of the different overclock settings in Hive. I've had bad luck. I haven't wanted to spend the time. I just I don't think it's worth it to me, uh, especially since you don't really save that much. So for Big Navi, for any of the 6000 series, 6700 XT and above, uh, 2000 core, 925 on the memory will work just fine. Um, and then for the 5700 XT, 1500 on the core, 850 on the memory. Now, it took me a long time to get those 5700 XT stable. So your results might be different than mine, but that's what I found that works. And I have no desire to mess with it any further. If you're on Hive, you want to make sure you have the latest version of WildRig. So to update the miner, you just want to copy and paste this command, which I'll put on the, in the description down below. You want to put this in the run command and you want to hit enter and it'll run. And then once it hits, you either want to reboot the miner or just reset the whole rig, depending on what you feel comfortable with. And it should update to the latest miner, and you should be good to go. So anyway, I hope that guide helped. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. This was just a simple, quick guide. I know everybody wants to get their rigs up as fast as they can, as the hash rate keeps rising. But thankfully, the price keeps rising with it. Now, we're down a little bit right now, but it pushed 8 but it pushed 800 uh, this morning, and I think it'll go back up, especially as the crypto market does pretty is doing pretty well this week. And it seems like there's a lot of positive move trending movement for Nexa, and a good future. Um, and it seems like it has a pretty solid future, as you can see from the seven day growth. It's over 100 percent gain. It's it's kind of crazy. Uh, anyway, again, this is not financial advice. It's just my opinion. Uh, please like and subscribe. And let me know if there's anything else I can do. I'll keep launching more Nexa content next week, as well as a th uh, week three update on my farm. Again, please like and subscribe. Crew man out.